here. Welcome to the seed. Let's get creative. You will have received a two kg pack of air dry clay, either in the white color or the terracotta color. The first thing you're going to need to do is open up your pack of clay and I would like you to cut a quarter off your block of clay. So this would be half, therefore that's about a quarter. With a small sharp vegetable knife, cut quarter off your block of clay. Once you've done that, may I suggest we take about a third off that block. We're going to start by making a small planter, a small sloth planter. My recommendation is that you start small so that you can learn how to make this little sloth planter before you move up to a much bigger size. Now, may, before we go any further, may I suggest that you always keep the clay you are not using covered up and sealed. If I'm just putting it back in this, um, the pack that it arrived in, and then I would suggest you also pop this in a plastic bag and seal it up with some sticky tape so that the air doesn't dry it out while you're not using it. The next thing you're going to do is take that little ball of clay or the little square of clay and pat it into a nice round shape. So turn it into a ball shape, either by gently squeezing or you can also pat, pat, pat down onto your bench top or tabletop, whatever you may be using. So just keep going until that turns into a nice little round ball. The next step is to make a little hole in the middle of your ball using your thumb or a finger and just gently open that up a little. Do not squeeze to the sides too thin, just keep, keep the ball or this bowl nice and thick. These sides should be one to two centimeters thick. So just open that up a little first, like that. Now you're going to pick one area of this bowl, this chunky, thick-walled bowl, and using my fingers, my thumb and my first finger, I'm just going to squeeze this area here up a little. So that area there is going to become the head of the sloth. So notice how I'm just going around, pinching gently, round and around. So you can see the head starting to form already. And then using my thumb, thumb and fingers, I'm just going to pull that up a little. So it's almost a little bowl shape with a handle now. Okay, so now you can see how the head is forming. I've still got the little bowl shape here with the thick walls, but this area, this, it looks like a handle. It's actually going to become the head and it, keep it nice and thick, you know, up to two centimeters because you want to paint the little smiley face on here later. The next step is to decide where you're going to pull up the clay to create the four legs. Now, what I suggest you do next is make a little indentation on the side here. If I hold it like this, you can see what I'm doing. So just push, push in here. And then this is going to become one leg. That's going to become a second, the back leg. Do the same, turn your sloth over and do the same on this side. Make a little indentation so that you can start, you can see these little lumps forming. One, four, one leg, back leg, front leg, back leg. Okay, so now that you can see where you're going to be pulling up the clay, just gently from the bottom of the bowl here, pinch and pull up. So 
and then squeeze like so. Now you can see one leg starting to form. Again, at the back here, start at the bottom. I'm finger on the inside, thumb on the outside, pinch and pull up. So pinch from the base and pull up and then squeeze like so. And there you have the second leg forming. Now I'm going to turn it over and do the same on the other side. So it's just a gradual process. Again, here you can see the little indentation I made. This will be the front leg, this will be the back leg. Again, finger inside the bowl, thumb at the base here, at the bottom on the outside, pinch, so as in squeeze and pull. And for the back leg, the same, pinch and pull so that these start to grow up to form the front and the back legs. So I'm going to keep forming the legs by pinching from the bottom of the bowl up and then also pinching together like so and then again the back leg. Now try not to go too thin because if you want to hang this sloth planter uh, from the ceiling or from a beam, you'll want to put a little hole through the legs here later so that you can thread some nylon string or something through it, uh, through them. Uh, and you don't want to go too thin, you don't want to make it too fragile, of course, because the string is going to be holding a lot of weight. Therefore, yeah, the, the legs don't want to be too fragile. So carry on pulling these legs up. You can push down a bit between the legs as well. And then keep pinching, 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 coming up. Squeeze those together to make them look less stumpy and more like long, leg, long legs. So now you can see how the sloth is starting to look like it has a head and four legs. If the clay starts to crack, because it is drying quickly now once it's out of the plastic bag, I suggest you have a little bowl of water nearby and a sponge. Soak, uh, soak your sponge, but squeeze it out so that your sponge is just damp, not soaking wet. Wipe the clay. You can see how the, the uh, air dry clay looks shiny. That's enough water. Don't use too much water. Don't soak it because you'll end up with a big sloppy mess. If you add a little bit of moisture to the surface of your air dry clay, you can then rub, massage the clay into any cracking areas. So I'll do the same on this side. I can see a few cracks starting to form there. So just gently with your fingertips or your thumb, smooth the clay into the cracked areas. And the same with the little head, just smooth it over nicely. Don't worry too much about little imperfections because once your air dry clay sloth planter is bone dry, you're going to be painting using acrylic paints and the paint will hide a lot of small or minor imperfections. By continuing to pull the clay up from the bottom inside the bowl, you will thin the walls a little more so that the bowl isn't too heavy and chunky. So what I'm doing now is placing my thumb inside the bowl. Actually, if you make your thumb, uh, just uh, squeeze your sponge, your sponge so that your thumb's damp. Pop the thumb inside and fingers on the outside. Now, I'm gently squeezing, but also starting inside the bowl here at the bottom, wipe that up. So squeeze and wipe. And Remembering not to go too thin, especially around the top here. You don't want to make your legs too skinny and fragile. So I'm just really thinning out the body of the bowl. 
So wiping up, thumb on the inside, fingers on the outside, and just gently squeeze and wipe up. Squeeze and wipe up. So I'm doing this motion, squeezing and wiping up like that on the inside. And that way the bowl is now growing. It's becoming a little bigger. I can put both thumbs in here and just squeeze out some of that thickness. Here it's quite thick. So you need quite long thumbs to get in there and give it a little squeeze. Try to make the e it even, the, the wall thickness even. And so you just carry on thinning the bowl and working on the legs, squeezing together like that to keep them nice and skinny and then a gentle, gentle squeeze and pull up to get some, create some more length. And you'll keep doing that until you've got the desired length. Once you're happy with the, the size of the bowl, the thickness and the length of your legs, if you want to keep the sloth a nice rounded shape here at the on the back of the, I guess it's the back of the sloth, um, because you're going to hang it from the ceiling. My suggestion is that you have um, a little bowl on hand. You'll have one in the kitchen, about the same size as the sloth you've been making. And then what I would also recommend is that you pop a tea towel or a hand towel inside the bowl and then place your little sloth in the bowl so that it keeps that nice round shape on the back. If you're not going to hang it from the ceiling then of course you can just place it on a tabletop and let it dry so that um, it has a flatter base. So if I now pop it on the bench here and just gently pat it it'll have a flat base so that it won't roll away. The, that's up to you whether you're going to hang it up or leave it sitting on a table. And that's it. That's the sloth planter. If you would like to make a larger one, I suggest you don't go too big too fast. So the next one you could use a quarter of the bag. If you decide you'd like to hang your sloth planter, then you can either leave the legs apart or you can actually join them together. And to join them together, all you need to do is make the clay damp with a little water from your bowl and then press the, the ends of the legs here, the top of the legs, together and just gently uh, rub, wiggle them together. So I'm pressing them together and then just a little wriggle, pressing, wriggle, 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 and press until they stick together. So that's another option. You can leave them apart or join them together. And to make holes, to be able to hang them with a piece of string or nylon string, I suggest you use a skewer and just drive the skewer through the top of the legs. I'm just going to pass the whole thing through to open those and make sure that there's no raggy bits blocking the hole because once the air dry clay sloth planter dries, it's very hard to open that up again. So I've just put a hole through the front legs and now the back. Again, just clean that up on the other side, drive that through again, make sure that the, hole, the holes are clean. Now, what I have is a sloth planter with his little legs joined here at the top and the holes you can see straight through those holes, making it easy to pass a piece of string through there. And once again, pop your 
planter, sloth planter, back in a little bowl so that it dries with a nice rounded back. And that's it. We're done. Thank you for joining me for this sloth planter class and have fun.